the recent rhetoric and policy announcements is kind of more of the same from my perspective. You know, there there is some welcome uh, additional support around employment and health, but it's kind of relatively small fry. And the bigger picture is this kind of fundamental misreading of the problem that kind of says, well, if we change the kind of goalposts around assessment and we have more people being um, declared able to undertake some work preparation and therefore we provide them with a lower level of financial support and we increase the pressure on them through conditionality that somehow this is the thing that's going to that's going to fix it it brings it back to an idea that this is about kind of just people needing to be pushed or encouraged to um, just reassess their situation and, and realise that actually um, they could take the step. I think it needs a much more kind of supportive hand on the shoulder. And I think what will happen, as has happened previously, is there'll be a lot of stress and anxiety around the changes. Um, people who are negatively affected by these changes will often be pushed into greater financial hardship and actually poorer health, um, particularly mental health. And then even where this kind of pushing people quite hard into work and using both conditionality and low benefit rates as a kind of lever to achieve that, even where it does work in terms of someone getting a job outcome, what we often see is that is relatively poor quality work, low paid, insecure, often leads to people cycling in and out of the benefit system or not moving off the benefit system at all because they're not being paid enough to, to no longer be on universal credit. So I, I just think we're still stuck in a very kind of outdated and misguided way of kind of understanding both the problem and the solution.